Thank you. Um, I'll just start off. Um, last year, the operations of the NSA were, were all over in the news. How governments are spying on us and multinationals are feeding them with information. We decided to turn this around and to look what can we regular people find out about these secret deals between governments and multinationals. So um, we chose a very ambitious uh, target for our research in the, the masterclass that Rogier and I was, were participating in. Uh, and the target of our research was one of the biggest companies in the world, which is Royal Dutch Shell, which is based also in the Netherlands. As journalists, we suspect this multinational heavyweight might have a strong presence and maybe even a strong influence on a government like ours. And this is all the more problematic since Shell is doing business in countries like Russia, Nigeria and Iran, not particularly champions in transparency and democracy. So as journalists, we would love to know what is being discussed in this boardroom. Shell is literally as closed as a shell. When you try to get information about them in the traditional way, like giving them a telephone call, you won't get very far. In the old days, when doors would not open, as a journalist, you would turn around sullen-faced. But now we, can, we, have, we have other options. We can turn around and we can walk to our computer. So this is what we did. And um, if you do it in this way, you can interrogate the company in a completely new way without them actually knowing it. You can look over their shoulder, you can look at lots of information, of, of lots of information sources to know about them without them knowing it. Or you can look at information that they have put out for one purpose and that you can repurpose in a different way. In a masterclass that we participated on, uh, as uh, Hadassah was already, already mentioning, it was organized by the Dutch Sandberg Institute and the Dutch Media Fund. What we did was we would tap into this data and try, try to develop new tools that could, m to, that could help us to make sense of this abundance of information. And we're going to look now at two examples of uh, the tools that we developed in the masterclass. Okay, let's take a look at two examples. Um, the first data set that we looked into for this documentary uh, were the Wikileaks cables. Um, well, the Wikileaks cables, we had 250,000 documents. So where do you start? There can be any kind of potential interesting information, but how do you find it in 250,000 cables? Well, the first thing you do, of course, is uh, we use the search engine, we use the Argus machinery, and you search for Shell, but you still have thousands of cables. Or you search for Shell and Iran, and, and still there are thousands of hundreds of cables uh, to read. So we read a lot of these cables, but how to grasp this quantity of information as a journalist? Now, to give you, a, a, let's see, one cable, for instance, you read something like this. Uh, Royal Dutch Shell exerts strong influence on Dutch foreign economic policy. Well, that's kind of what we thought. For example, and then the name is censored, Mr. X whom you will meet in October, et cetera, et cetera. Well, of course, if you read this, you want to know who's Mr. X. So you do a Google search, and there are many sources of the Wikileaks cable, so we found another one. Maybe it was of the spelling mistake, Rodel Dutch Shell in the cable. Um, and we found out, well, he's actually called Simon. It turns out that uh, everybody is using social media nowadays. And then we thought, okay, maybe this is interesting. Try to view at this, this enormous quantity of information from a different perspective and see, focus on the people in the, in the cables and see who they are. We don't know these people. They aren't the big CEOs. They are apparently diplomats working for, for Shell in this case. So we, we read in the cables. Um, one back. <laughs> one back. Now, yeah, let, let's take a look at um, Simon, for instance. Uh, on LinkedIn, you can, you can see who this guy is. Uh, he works for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for, uh, for quite a while. And then in the cables, we can read that he works for Shell. He works there for two years, in the summer of 2008, for instance. And then he works as a government relations advisor. 
And then uh, he returns back to the government. He works now as a director general at the Ministry of Economic Affairs. And let's see if we can find more of these people. In the, in the cables we can read, this is something called the Shell Government Relations Group, apparently. So we wanted to find more of these people. Now, where can you find more of these people? Of course, on LinkedIn, you, there are so many resumes and every Shell employee is so friendly to place his resume. But we didn't want to do it with our own LinkedIn profile. Probably a lot of you use LinkedIn and sometimes, especially as a journalist, you don't want to do that with your own profile. And it's best if you have, a, if you have one that has a lot of links to, to Shell people. For instance, when you work at Shell, but yeah, both of us, we don't work at Shell, unfortunately, and we couldn't find a Shell employee that let us sniff around with his account. What we could do is, is create somebody that worked at Shell. So we created an email address. Uh, we called her Eva de Jong, which is a very common Dutch name. And you go to LinkedIn and you create a resume. And uh, well, we made her a, a project manager at Shell. That can be quite anything. And then we added a profile and we, we, well, we photoshopped a little picture. Otherwise, it's not really real without a picture. So this is the non-existing Eva de Jong. And we invited our colleagues from Shell. <laughs> So send invitations, and these are the reactions. <laughs> and you get some personal notes, like this one, or <laughs> here, I, Eva, I'm wondering if I was your colleague, smiley face. <laughs> and at a certain point, you even got people who invited us, and then it gets even more interesting. And then you have, uh, here we have, uh, what is it, 94 connections. And with this profile, we went to search for all these people. So you find a lot of people that are really similar to this, the Simon person we just showed you, government relations advisors, all kind of diplomats working for Shell. So what we did is we, co we took this database, we combined it with the, the WikiLeaks cables, and then you have an idea, okay, these are the people having the conversations in the cables. And some of them work for Shell, some of them work for the government, and some of them work for both. And then it gets interesting. Um, here, this is an animation we made. Uh, for instance, this is Simon. He's linked to Shell. He's linked to the government. And there are many different other people um, linked to different departments of Shell, and they are back related to the government. So for us, this was an interesting uh, way of, of, of showing, grasping the 250,000 cables and seeing it from a different perspective um, uh, what's actually in that co cables and on which persons and in what locations you can focus on. Uh, so that was the first example. Second example, um, another very interesting data set is uh, shipping data. You can find a lot of data on ships and of course Shell uses a lot of oil tankers. So for instance, uh, this one, is, these are fixture lists and you have all kind of very interesting data. For instance, uh, automatic shipping in the, uh, uh, identification, uh, which is basically every oil tanker has a little device and it sends a signal uh, where it is. So I'm here now, I'm here now, now I'm in that port, now I'm in the middle of the ocean, etc., etc. So a lot of data is, coll is, is collected. And then you have these enormous lists. But yeah, uh, Suchen got a, a tip from a fellow journalist, mm -hmm. uh, Nomnik. Uh, Anonymous link of somebody that sends something, a big pile of information, there's something interesting in here. And she got it in her email and, and you printed it out and it was like a phone book of information. So where do you find it? Where do you start? So what we did is we translated this information together with the British company 422 South to a map. And then we added the time element so you get an animation. And then it looks like this. So all these white sperm cells you see there, they are all uh, <laughs> ships going through the Persian Gulf. And then the red one you see over there, that was interesting to us. It's, a, it's the front page, an oil tanker charted by Shell. And here it goes to a port in the, in the Emirates, Jebel Dana. And the official record said it went to Saudi Arabia. But now we have more, far more precise information and we can see that it actually didn't go to Saudi Arabia, but it went to Iran. And there it loaded cargo and only after that, it went to Saudi Arabia. So, of course, uh, yeah, we wanted to know why does Shell want to hide this information? Uh, so, this is second example, uh, two examples of, of us uh, by, uh, well, dealing with these data sets in a, in a creative way and, and, and try to visualize it or 
let's say, designing it uh, really helped us to grasp the enormous amount of information. So, uh, well, the results are all in the documentary. <laughs> the big data, the shell search, uh, it aired already on television, but you can also see it online on the VPRO Backlight website. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much. Awesome. Of course, we can all watch the documentary online, but David is so curious. He says, what was the biggest discovery, one of the biggest that you, that you couldn't have done without, without this data-driven journalism? Okay. Yeah, well, the, the, maybe we should uh, add to the last example that you just saw that uh, we, we tried to, to find out who Shell was dealing with and who Shell was doing business with. And this was, of course, during the period when there were still sanctions against Iran. Now there's a completely different situation because there's a new president and Iran has uh, start, started to, talking, to talk again to the West. So uh, it's a different atmosphere. But in those days, this was uh, 2011, I think, uh, it was still completely uh, forbidden to do any transaction with Iran. So when we saw that from this shipping data information that uh, there were ships going to Iran, chartered by Shell, this was a story that you could never have found in a different way than through this kind of analysis, because of course the company itself would never talk about uh, these dealings. Yes. They didn't uh, exist officially. And uh, it's only by a kind of a second, uh, an, 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 a kind of data set that doesn't relate to the trading directly, but it's a kind of an indirect way of finding out that you can really prove what happened during those days. And of course, we went back to Shell to ask their comments on it. And yes. uh, the, the company declined to comment on it, oh, yes? but they didn't, they didn't uh, deny it either. So indirectly, that's a kind of... Uh, uh, saying that that this was going on indeed, yes. So, uh, as a result of this of this collaboration and the co documentary, you developed a, a power map. Is that a, it's a, it's a tool that every journalist can use. Is that is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's a research tool. It's still in development. But uh, what you see with all the the puppets and the, the, you can you can look up these people. And you can see who they're connected to. You, uh, journalists can add people if they know more information or they know different kind of ways they are related. Yeah, so, we are so the research that. is sti still a going on process. In this. Yeah. And do you consider yourself a, a designer or a journalist after this experience? Uh, well, the, the, the phrase was coined, uh, the graphic journalist. The graphic <laughs> journalist. Like combination. <laughs> and for you, of course, it's a whole new, uh, it's a, which is a mer à boire, a whole new, new way of, 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 of making films for the yeah, future. Yeah, well, what, what's interesting about PowerMap is that it's really a network analysis, what you do. So you can look at text and, and you can look at large amounts of text and it takes you a lot of time to go through the whole text, but when you visualize it, uh, you you get a totally new perspective and you look for patterns rather than, than, than verbal kind of clues. It's a completely new way of understanding how complex things, uh, how mechanisms work in a way. So what design yeah. can do for journalism. Absolutely. Thank yes. you very Thank much. You so Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Suchentan and Rogier Klomp. Thank you.